Hello everyone, in this video we will learn about decidable questions and undecidable questions. Uh, coming to decidable questions which are the most important questions and that are decidable and uh, why it is uh, when we can say that such questions are decidable. If you can get an answer for a certain uh, questions then we can say that such questions are uh, decidable. Now next we will see the membership. What do you mean by membership? We are going to check that whether the string is in the language L or not. If the language is specified in the context free language, then we can then, then we can decide whether the string is in L or not using the two approaches. Using the two approaches. One is using a context free grammar and the other one using um, other approaches using a PDA. So let's first we'll see how to use a grammar. So now uh, Coming to grammar, coming to grammar, okay, coming to grammar, we have to, we have to check whether the string is in L or not, string is in L or not, using the, using the derivation, you have to find the derivation, you have to find the derivation and then string, we have to see whether the string is in L or not, okay. So you all know how to find the derivation for a uh, uh, derivation of a string uh, for a string using the grammar. So if you do not know about the derivation, how to get the derivation for a string using the grammar, you can uh, refer those videos, earlier videos on uh, derivation. So now, first of all, in this finding the string using a derivation derivation happens in a happens in a certain number of steps okay so finally if you can get a string then we can say that then we can say that particular string is in l and coming to pda pda in the sense after processing the, the there is you can construct a machine okay machine using the representation of pda then if the if the after applying the uh, after giving the input string to a machine, if it holds, holds on uh, all inputs, then we can say that particular string is, is particular string is either accepted or rejected by the string. If it is, uh, if it is accepted, if the string is in L, if the string is in L, then obviously it is going to halt this machine PDA is going to halt at accepting state. Okay, it's going to halt at accepting state. Accepting state in the sense it is going to accept that particular string. If it is all set non-final state, that means that particular string is rejected by the string, rejected by the string. Okay. Now, we will see the steps. How to use a grammar, how to use a grammar to decide whether the string is in L or not. Let us see the algorithm related to that. Decide CFL using grammar. For this particular algorithm, for this particular algorithm, so you need to supply the language that is context free language and the string to decide whether the string is in L or not. So, if the language specified is PDA, if it is in the form of PDA, then you have to convert PDA to CFG, apply this function PDA to CFG conversion. And then uh, remember after the conversion of a PDA to CFG, the language produced by a grammar should be equivalent to the language produced by the original machine PDA. Okay? If L is specified as a grammar, that is if the input itself, the machine itself, uh, that is the language itself is specified as a grammar, then simply use that grammar. Okay? Then you have to apply, you have to obtain the derivation for the string. Okay, that is that will be your next steps. Okay, if the string is empty, if the string is empty and the grammar, grammar, uh, start symbol of the grammar, if it is nullable, that means if it can give you epsilon, if it can give you epsilon, then it is accepted, otherwise it is rejected. If the string is, if the string is not epsilon, not epsilon, that means the string can contain some uh, characters in it. Okay, 
then what you can say that then you know, first of all first of all convert that grammar into a chomsky normal form then try to get the derivation if the, if you can get the derivation in 2 into length of the string minus 1 suppose the string contains the character abc abc if you can get the derivation for uh, this string in uh, 2 into 3 minus 1 that is five steps five steps then you can say that then you can get the uh, say that uh, if we, uh, and using these many steps that is uh, by using these many steps if you can get uh, string w then it is accepted otherwise it is rejected this is the maximum number of steps it can use for abc the maximum number of steps uh, by using these many steps if you can get okay uh, it's the uh, maximum steps it is going to if it Uh, maximum steps it is going to use if it can get a string then okay then it is accepted otherwise it is rejected so worst case running time of decide cfl using grammar is order of n into 2 to the power n next we'll see how to use pda to decide how to use pda to decide yeah, there is a two step approaches first of all first of all if the language if language if it is containing epsilon containing epsilon then you have to convert the language into language minus epsilon so that it the your whatever pda you uh, you are going to get should uh, should accept only l minus epsilon uh, strings L minus epsilon strings. Okay. After that, after that, show that every PDA with no epsilon transition is guaranteed to hold. That is what the two-step approach. First of all, let's apply CFG to PDA no epsilon. So, how to get this? The first step. Okay. How to get the first step? That is for that. First of all, you need to convert. If the grammar, if the language is given in the grammar format, if the language is given in the grammar format. then convert it to gray bash normal form gray bash normal form and that will produce you give you g dash okay and that g dash is used to build a pda used to build a pda as described in the earlier uh, video as described in the earlier video okay so you can refer the cfg to pda video then i will uh, next we'll see the algorithm related decide cfl using pda decide cfl using pda if l is if the language for uh, is decided this specified as pda because you know that for this uh, that is if you want to decide cfl using pda the input should be input should be the language context free language you can uh, check here context free grammar and the string and the string okay next if the language is specified as pda then you have to apply pda to cfg pda to cfg to construct grammar g such that the whatever the gram uh, language produced by uh, your grammar should be equivalent to the pda okay if l is specified as grammar then simply use g the same and then what you have to do if the string is epsilon if the string contains epsilon and uh, the, the star the star symbol of the grammar is going to is nullable or it is going to produce epsilon then it is accepted otherwise rejected okay next if the string is not epsilon okay if the string is not epsilon then what are you going to do okay in that case first of all you have to convert your grammar into gray bash normal form gray bash normal form and then whatever the grammar you are going to get for that you have to apply cfg to pda no epsilon c uh, that is construct c just such that it is in a normal form then using this okay you have to obtain a grammar so that it can contain no epsilon trans, uh, transition okay to so convert the cfg to pda so that uh, once you get a cfg then you have to uh, construct cfg to apply cfg to pda 
ok so that you can get a PDA with no epsilon transitions. Once that is done, once that is done then trying to get a trying to get a find the derivation trying to get the derivation ok so that and the finite within finite number of steps. So for the string trying to get a derivation for the string within finite number of steps. If your machine runs on the string and if it is accepted if m dash accepts, accepts otherwise it is rejects otherwise it is rejects. This is what you are going to do. Next we will see finally the undecidable questions. What are the undecidable questions? So undecidable questions are these. There exists no decision procedure for many other questions that we might like to be able to ask about context free languages. First of all given a context free language L if is L which is equal to sigma star. Then given the context free language L, it is the complement of L is context free. Given a context free language L is regular. G uh, the given two context free languages L1 and L1, L2 and is, is L1 equal to L2. Given two context free languages L1 and L2 and is L1 subset of L2 and then L1 intersection L2 is null. Then finally L is inherently ambiguous. Given a context free language uh, grammar G and G is ambiguous all these are the undecidable questions which, uh, uh, which is very difficult to find the answer. 